Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I just go ahead and prep everyone that my son is playing outside and he does not know I'm recording a podcast and there's a good chance he could come in and be loud. So if that happens, I apologize in advance. But that we gonna okay. roll through it. That is okay. Okay. Um, so what you been up to? Well, I've been crazy busy. Just got back from New York at a wonderful time in New York. And I want to talk about that in a second. Um, and then now we're in the week of UCF celebrates the arts. And so, you know, we've got concerts coming up on Friday and Saturday and just, and then Opera Orlando. I want to give a shout, shout out to Opera Orlando. I'm helping out with that, with their Rigoletto, doing course masters for that. So busy, like just busy. What, what, what about you? How was your weekend? I had, a, I had a good weekend. I went to New York. Had a great time. Want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds, uh, that sounds uh, similar to what I just said. Uh-huh. Yeah, I kind of um, But let's see. What else? I'm get, uh, less than a month left of school. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, on both ends. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, and then Easter's coming up. That's right. And this this year, which is crazy, Easter and my daughter's birthday are the same day. Oh, that's awesome. I know. Her birthday's April 17th. So she said she works at Publix and she goes, it's so great. It's like they shut the store for my birthday. <laughs> like, um, that's Jesus, Bella, not yours. Yeah, for real. But, <laughs> <it was. laughs> the store is shut in honor of Jesus, not Bella. Is that what? But it's funny. Why, why can't it be me? <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then work has been busy, but good. Yep. Nothing bad has happened there. So thankful for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, been going to the gym, get my workout back on, trying to get this body beach ready. The body beach. To where it doesn't look. Get my body ready for the beach. Okay. So okay. I don't look like. So people will know that I'm a girl on the beach and not one of like a beached whale wildlife that has been washed up on the shores. I don't even know why you come up with that stuff you come up with, but okay. You are not a beached oh, whale. Brilliant. Basically, you, basically you said, I'm not a beached whale. <laughs> that was just it. I want to make sure I don't look like you. Yeah, you good. You good. That's what I'm saying. I see. I, I hear you. I hear you. But also, you know, I got the loop. The lupus. So I want to make sure that I I'm really trying to keep my symptoms at bay. Because I'll tell you what, when the seasons change and the climate changes and you got an autoimmune disease, mm-hmm. you want to talk about getting triggered. Whew, yeah. My hands will swell up, my knuckles will get red, and then like it hurts to move. So I've really been I've been doing hot works. Mm-hmm. So if you don't know what hot works is, for people that don't know what hot works is. They open up another one in Winter Garden, but I go to one in Winter Garden. But they're all over. Okay. And it's a sauna. I still want you to go with me one time. I think okay. you'd hate it, but I want you to go. Uh-huh. Um, but it's a sauna. Well, either you would love it or hate it. I'm not sure. Okay. But it's a sauna, and they have like Pilates, bar, uh, warrior, yoga, cycle, ellipticals. And you go into the sauna. It's like 130 degrees of infrared heat, and you work out. Okay. And like in yoga, what I have noticed from like when I do yoga, like in my bedroom, you know, like on the, like in a normal space mm-hmm. and I look at like my halo band, which is like a Fitbit that you get from Amazon. If you don't know what that is, but, and, but it's more accurate than any of them I've ever used. Right. So plug in halo. That's, that's free. Nobody's paying for that. That was just free. So, but, uh, my heart rate would get to like, you know, like 105, 110. And my heart rate is like mad low on right. the standard. Our resting heart rate is like 64. Uh-huh. And so it'd get there. But like when you're doing the infrared, mm-hmm. it's getting up like the stiff and like pain feeling. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm loving that. So because it's so close to my house and now I work from home, 
like at lunch, I just leave and the workout is 30 minutes long or th- well, like 37 minutes, something like that. Right, right. I leave, I go to the gym, I come home and I still have my evening where we can do this like we're doing right now. Good, good, yeah. Well, I'm glad you got yeah. this on the schedule. Let's talk a little bit about New York. I want to back that up. So, Concrete jungle where dreams are made of. Sorry. So anyway, you can't um, say New York, and I'm not going to do that. So anyway, so it was neat because um, we went to New York, and it was special because it was a lot of different things going on. You know, um, it was like my brother Tesfa. We'll talk about that. He um, did his premiere of his piece. Um, um, called to repair and it's a multi-movement work that is absolutely incredible that he spent like last summer 60 days on the road going to different um different states and different cities and 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 just doing almost like a historical thing on the oftentimes of you know black community and the different things that happened um in just just that genre of life and how do you repair that? So that was very powerful. I'll come back on that in a second. Then um, then we had a chance to, he and I had a chance to team up to do a concert together, had um, high school students, collegiate students, and so on and so forth. And um, we were able to do a concert, share, share a concert at Carnegie Hall. So that was really, really awesome. Shout out to UCF. Um, and that was awesome. And then we saw, um, we did a piece called The Suffrage Cantata, um, written by um, another shout out to Andrea Ramsey. And um, so that was great. Dr. Kelly Miller was there and she brought some of the UC, her soul, um, soprano alto choir, to perform in that. Um, so that was great, conducted by um, Dr. Sandra Snow. And then we saw um, a piece called Alzheimer's Stories, and it was very powerful. Um, talked about people who were living with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. And so it was just an incredible, incredible, incredible time, you know, then backing up, backing up um, with Tess for doing his piece with the Michigan State men, the, 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 I'm sorry, the University of Michigan men's um, choir doing it. It's just a powerful, heart wrenching, transformative concert. Um, it was just incredible. It was just an incredible weekend. Then having you there and, and meeting a lot of people and doing you doing your thing and seeing how that that life works. Um, make sure I haven't missed anything or anyone, but just oh, uh, it all put on um by national concerts and Matt Workman and his team, you know what what they've done. So just a shout out to everyone that you know was a part of that whole situation, but just wonderful. And then having, having the university, the UCF singers sing on that stage at Carnegie and getting them hungry and inspired for travel, you know, that is just it was a great weekend. How was it for you? Okay, so I made a Facebook post a little bit about it. Okay. But 2011 was the worst year of my life. Go to episode one if you don't know, and you'll understand why. But from 2011, I lived probably, I was a shell of a person for a few plus years. Um, Love my kids and was grateful for them, but like it was really like going through the motions of trying to be happy and really thinking like I would never be. It was more of a survival mentality, I guess, Mm -hmm. than a living mentality. Like it was relief to go to bed and dread when I woke up Uh because I didn't want to have pain. And sadness and stress and all of that. And I'll tell you, something happened when I was in New York this time. Uh You were doing something somewhere, rehearsing somewhere. I don't know. Um, But I was putting makeup on because I had went to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I was going to go, like, walk around and whatever. So I was putting makeup on. And I looked out the window. Um. And when I looked out the window, I could look directly the hotel room. You could see like Central Park okay. to the right. And then you can see like the Upper West Side, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I sat there and I was born in 77. Mm-hmm. When I was in college, Friends was the show. 
And I remember sitting there watching Friends and seeing Central Park and like the episode where Rachel was running. Well, she, when Rachel and Phoebe become roommates because Monica moves in with Chandler mm-hmm. and they decided the first thing that they're going to do as roommates is to go run in Central Park. Mm-hmm. Well, I see them running in Central Park and Phoebe runs like a crazy, like with her legs thrown out. Rachel's embarrassed and it's a, like that's part of the episode. Anyway, and I remember watching that and thinking people run in this park in the center of New York. Like, I just thought it was so weird. Right. And then I've realized, like, while I was sitting there, I was like, there's Central Park. Hmm. I ran in Central Park. I, I, I've literally done things I used to dream of doing. Mm-hmm. And I love to travel. I'm happy. And I never thought I would be again. Right. And I'm actually able, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, but I have, I've, I have anxiety. We've talked about that before too. Yeah. But one of the issues with my anxiety is that I have destructive thinking. Right. And this was a big turnaround for me because where I normally think doom and gloom, it was actually like happy. Uh huh. And I'm so grateful. I'm grateful to you. Mm-hmm. for giving me the opportunity to go with you mm-hmm. and like see things and do things. And I've never done this. Mm-hmm. Like I love my home, but I love to go. I love to come back. I love to see it. I am. I cannot go into Nordstrom and spend $6,000 on a pair of pants. Mm-hmm. Literally. I saw a pair of pants in Nordstrom for $6,000. Why would anyone ever pay $6,000 for a pair of pants is beyond me. Even if I was a billionaire. That's a cheap car or a good car. (laughs) I mean, I'm telling you, if I, if I could throw $300 in the trash can, it would not affect me. If I was that person, Mm -hmm. I would not spend $6,000 on a pair of pants. Right. Like anyway, not judging those who do just saying like, that's not, it just, uh, Mm -hmm. like I sometimes I struggle spending $39.99. I'm like, they're Target. Target, come on. It's not $39 for pants. Anyway, but you know, I'm not rich. I'm not, you know, living in a penthouse. Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly where I want to be in anything, but dang it, if I ain't getting there. And if I'm not so stinking grateful for this journey. To get to where I'm at right now. I am so grateful. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make it a point to me every day that I remember that I'm grateful. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like when I get to where I'm bleh. and like I went, I went into Carnegie Hall and saw the Maestro Suite. Uh-huh. I went into Carnegie Hall and sat on the second floor and watched all the shows that you watched. Mm-hmm. I went to the Lincoln Center. I'd never been there before. That was new. And watched Tesla's thing. I met Tesla. Mm-hmm. Like, these people who are your people, I'm learning to embrace. Although I am not a choir kid, I don't know that I'll ever be a choir person. I am really learning to appreciate it. Right. And, that's and the all, work that goes into it. That's all anybody can ask. Ask, can you appreciate it? You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it is a lot of work. Yeah. And like the kids and the, I love them kids, and I love the way them kids love you. That is not good English at all. I hold on, people, because I know somebody somewhere. There's teachers because you got friends that listen to this. There's people that are teachers who just cringed and was like, Christy. I really love to watch how those children love on you better. Sorry, guys. Slaughtered the English language for a minute. (laughs) But I mean, I love it. It warms my heart. We were at uh, Junior's Cheesecake. Oh, my Lord. I love that place so much. Mm. I can get excited over food. But it's the reason we got to go to Hot Works. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I don't know what you did. I don't know what you're doing. I was talking to Kelly, but uh-huh. you stood up. Mm-hmm. And next thing I know, 
you're playing a game at a table, like the Ellen DeGeneres guess the game yeah. on your phone thing with kids I have never seen in my life. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the students you came with. It was students in the, that you were conducting. Well, I maybe, maybe I'm on. Was it the students that you were conducting in the moment? Yeah, they were, they were in the honor choir. They were like in your choir? Yeah. And then you go to another table and they're all taking pictures with you. And they love you. They're so excited to see you. And it's, it makes me proud to know you. Mm-hmm. Because I'll tell you what, you might not be perfect, but you are a fantastic educator and a fantastic conductor. Okay. And you really can make children. And by children, I lose that young adults, young people. I mean, you're the proud of people. It might not have an age gap, but you get what I'm saying. You really can bring out like motivation and comfort Mm -hmm. in these people. And the thing that I think is beautiful, what they think of you, like, and what they love about you is only just like skimming the surface. They have no idea how great you really are. Look at that. You got that for free. I wasn't even planning to say that. Well, thank you. (laughs) You just got awkward. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Don't feel awkward. No, I mean, it's the truth. I love watching it. And I got cakes in a jar for my kids. Is it going already? Yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah. Well, no, it was, like I said, it was great having you there to see that side of the world. You know what I'm saying? My world, you know. And it's because it just sort of open your eyes to certain things, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's even for the kids. It's like, you don't know till you get there. Right. You know, you don't know till you go through the experience and then you come back, you know. And that's why I often tell people, it's like, make sure before you have an opinion about something that you've gone through it and that you can experience it. Because if you ain't gone through it, why you got an opinion? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Honestly, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, why, what, really? You know, I can never, this is my favorite thing. I can never sit there and tell, tell somebody, girl, I know how it feels to be pregnant. Ooh, let me tell you, because when I was never pregnant, so I don't talk. <laughs> right. But I don't speak. So that being said, to see you go through that and see it and then say, oh, I say, yeah. But then you, you have this personality in which you, like, if somebody don't like you, it's really them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because like, you really brought, um, because it's like, you can go into a situation and then you just, you and you're friendly and then you're nice to people and you know, you just kind of whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's interesting on my end to see how you were going up to different people and just talking to them, talking to, you know, Tessa's wife, Michelle, and y'all just talking, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't interfere, be you, you know, it's, and it's, I would just like to say, if you all know Tesla who's listening to this and you know his wife, can we take a minute as a community to acknowledge how stunningly beautiful she is? Like this yeah. woman's skin is flawless. Mm-hmm. Her face is flawless. Yeah. She's sitting there talking to me and I was like, she is like, I, I had skin envy. <laughs> she is so pretty. Yeah, go on. Okay, sorry. That was just, I just, I think that she is absolutely breathtaking. But, you know, the, the thing about Michelle also, the thing about Michelle also, because she is beautiful, but she's also a beautiful person. Yes. You know, and that's the thing that, you know, is so oh. beautiful about them, you know, both of them. And so mm-hmm. beautiful people, beautiful musicians. So it's, it was it was neat. That being said, it was just neat to see you navigate your way and and people whom I have a lot of respect for and whom I care for respect you. You know what I'm saying, and hey, and make you feel comfortable, and and that was and that was beautiful to see, you know, because you know again, I was doing my own thing and just working, but um, that was that was neat. Um, now let's move on on to our next conversation as we segue. No way, I have one more thing. I yes, just remembered it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, um, <laughs> I put my hand up. Oh, put my hand sure up. Did. So one of the things I want to say because I talked about Michelle being pretty. Let me bring up Tesfa and you for a minute. Uh huh. Because I meant to make a post about this, but I did not. But maybe I will. Anyway, so it's, I don't know what day it is, but it's raining. Mm-hmm. 
and we're getting ready to get you food. I right. done ate, but we're getting ready to go get you. I had already eaten mm-hmm. and we went to go, we were going to go get you guys food. Right. And there was a gentleman, an older man. He looked like he could be homeless. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if he was or not. He might have had like Down syndrome. There was a mental disability going on. Mm-hmm. And he was confused. And I am telling you what's the truth, what I saw you and Tespa do. And I am a horrible person. <laughs> I am. No, it, it hit me. I'm a horrible person and I will be a better person. Like I'm going to be a better person. Mm-hmm. And ooh, I felt myself get teary. Ugh, go down, tears. Ugh. Um, you and Tespa had the patience that I have never seen two people have to help someone. This man was trying to get somewhere and y'all were trying to give him directions and he didn't understand. And then it was like three and apparently it started at seven and you all didn't want him to go. And then y'all, you went to one of the people on the street and bought the man an umbrella because he looked like a drowned rat because he was soaked all the way through. Um, and then y'all walk him into the hotel lobby like you own the place. Because, you know, they they ain't going to let him in. And so, like, you all escorted him in and sat there so he could warm up and try to figure out how to help him. And it just touched my heart that, that you know, I was brought, I don't want to say I was brought up, but, yeah, yes, of course, as a woman, well, as a man, too, you got to be careful who you contact on the street and, like, you know, we saw some dude like jump from a car and flip him off. You might be dealing with the crazy, but this man, obviously, you made eye contact. Y- y'all made eye contact. You took the time to talk to him. Or you could have walked away or not walked away. You helped him. You helped him with his phone and how to use his phone. And Tesla was so patient and was trying to help in every way that he could. And it was the most beautiful thing that I had ever seen with you all. And then the next day, we're walking down the street. Or maybe the day after, I don't know. And there's a man sitting, not sitting, laying on the ground, snuggled up to a chain link fence, and he shivered. And you took your coat off and covered this homeless man up with a with your coat. Your brand new coat, might I add, that you had had for 12 hours. And who does that? Like. In my head, you think, well, they're probably a drunk. What have they done to, they're sleeping on, what if they are? If they are, then they have an illness and they still need help in humanity. Like you showed me, that that's just something, I mean, I ain't been around that many homeless people in my life where I see things like that because I grew up in Northeast Tennessee, you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're around. Uh, I mean, there's homeless people in Northeast Tennessee, of course, but like I'm in the country, there's not people sleeping on the streets because there's no streets. Right. You know, like like that. So um, to see it and your compassion for these people that you don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I'm going to start like before I go somewhere, I'm going to start get, like take out 50 bucks of five dollar bills and start handing it to people as I go through. The next time I go to New York, I'm going to do that. That's going to be a thing that I do because I want to bless people and I want to be a kind person and I want to do better and be better and spread love and joy throughout and be much more of a giving person because I'm grateful for what I have and I want to help other people too. And it might be $5 and it might not be huge, but it could also change their life. Mm -hmm. And they're people that need love. Okay. Thank you for coming to my Ted talk. I'm really sorry. That was a tangent, but I loved you both for that. I I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, Not to make you feel awkward. You just, you never know what, you never know what someone's story. And oftentimes we judge people from the outside and, and we don't understand their story. We don't know, and we never know if the shoe will ever be reversed. Um, it's easy to say, oh, i never go that Okay, you never know how life is. So you just try your best to be kind. Because you just never know. Life is truly, just, it's just, life is beautiful, but it's also, in many ways, unexpected. You know, you have unexpected mm-hmm. situations. So, you know, so you keep going. Yeah. All righty. So let's move on to a minute 
And it's just something I want to touch on briefly before we get into what we're getting into next week. But I have anxiety. We've talked about that. People know it. You know it. Um, (laughs) You probably know it better than anybody. But with my anxiety comes a thing that is called destructive thinking. Do you know what that is? It's destructive. <laughs> it, it, well, it, it's it's crazy uh, is what it is. Right. And it's high fear inducing. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. This is a true one. I have fear of eating grapes at home if no one's here. Because I'm afraid okay. I'll get choked. Okay. And I envision myself getting choked and the children coming home and finding my dead dog. Wow. Um, I have, there's a bunch of fears that I have. And I, this was all triggered too after my husband passed away. Mm-hmm. I didn't think this way beforehand. So I think there's awareness that bad things have happened. Like, does it? But another, like when we were in New York and this one freaked you out. And I told it. Mm-hmm. But that's helping me though. When I'm saying my destructive thinking to the people around me, because right. when you hear it, it sounds so much crazier. Right. It almost makes it like better for me. Anyway, yeah. so we were standing, you were straddled in the elevator, like one foot on the floor, one foot in the elevator. Uh-huh. And I, I said, I, go, I just had this big fear that what if the elevator drops straight to the ground and I see you get cut in half? Yeah, I thought she was weird. <laughs> yes, I what about- who thinks like oh that? Let me get an elevator. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. But really, if the elevator had dropped, I would be a dead girl. Right. But boy, that'd be a terrible sight to see right before you go. Yeah. Like, oh. But I think things like that all the time. It's a it's a like a worst case scenario mm-hmm. type of thought. Mm-hmm. And it's something I just kind of want to bring a moment of clarity to because when I said it to you out loud in New York. Uh-huh. And you're like, what? Uh And I told you, I do that all the time. Right. I know it's normal. I talked to my therapist about it. You know what I mean? Like, I know that it's a normal symptom of anxiety. And I'm working through to getting better with it. And like, when I think that thing, I'm like, okay, no, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, But I mean, like, I think of like wrecks and airplane crashes. And I mean, when we say destructive, we're not talking like dropping your coffee cup. Right. We're talking like full on crime scene investigation things would have to happen. Right. And so for other people, and I mean, I used to think that I was certifiable, like there was something wrong with me and I was dark. Nope. That's called anxiety. Right, right, right. It's called anxiety. Um, Anxiety presents itself in different ways with different people. Destructive thinking is normal. Um, If you have it, get a therapist though. Yeah. Because it really does help with it. Mine is much farther and fewer between. Like, there's, like, I've had thoughts of my kids dying. What oh. would happen? How would it, like, how would you live? Like, how would, you know, like, getting a phone call mm-hmm. that something happened to your kids, something happening to my parents. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and it, it will send me if I don't rein it in, it will send me over the edge, which works a lot of people. And it's what my therapist said, <laughs> go get it. One of the reasons I'm so into true crime mm-hmm. is anxiety. It's a control thing. The more, you know, you know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Like people who have health, some people will dim it like with anxiety will have be like obsessed with health. Okay. Like WebMD always checking WebMD like that's their search page like when they log onto their computer it's WebMD and they're searching their symptoms okay. it's because you're looking for a form of control over the situation oh uh, okay so like when you're obsessed with true crime looking for control over the situation like you know what could happen and how to prevent things because the more you know you can prevent it right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's so many things that you can do like I mean one there's medication that you can take Mm-hmm. But you can also like behavioral therapy, work your mind through to retrain the way that your mind thinks. Okay. It is something great. And I just want people to know that they don't have to suffer with that. Because when I saw your face, when I told you and you were like, what? Well, I couldn't relate to it. 
I didn't I didn't judge it. I just couldn't relate to it. You yeah, know, but I mean, like, that's the thing. And I realized, like, a lot of people are very comfortable. I, like, I know you're not going to judge me. I know I can tell you anything and you don't judge me. No. You know what I mean? You're a very safe place to tell, like, any type of weird mm-hmm. crap I may come up with. Right. But, man, I felt crazy about that for a long time. Right. And I thought it was so abnormal. And like there was something wrong with me. And there is something wrong with you if you have it. It's called anxiety. But it's nothing wrong. Like you're not a sociopath. You're not a psychopath. You're there's nothing wrong. Right, right, right. You talk about mental health and that came up for me. I feel like it is an important thing to address. Yeah, no, I, think, I think so. Well, like today, I can't, I called you today. I called you today. I right. went to the lake. There's a lake near my house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is funny. Fun. I was like, this is funny. It's a little funny. Um, I go to the lake and there's this one alligator that's down there at the lake. You might have seen it on my Instagram or Facebook or something. Because I take a picture of him a lot of times because he'll get close to this dog. And he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Like, his head is big. Let me tell you. I went down there and there was like seven alligators. And I'll post it on the story more. I'll post it on the story where you can see what these alligators were. And there was one little guy who was like this big, like maybe, maybe how big is my forearm, my finger? One thing, one on uh, one foot. Yeah. So like maybe a foot long, including his tail. He's a little guy. Yeah. He's a little guy. That means there's a mom. Yeah. There's a mom somewhere. So I'm standing on this dock and I hear, Whoa. and I look down and it's a big old stinking gator below the dock. Below my feet, thrashing. I guess she was like, goodbye, ma'am. Listen, I look, and there ain't nothing but a bank. Like, it's a bank. It's like the lake and a bank. Like, there's no fence. All these gators could come after me, and I could be lunch. So I start freaking my own self out. You know how, like, if people go into a haunted house, and they get scared, and they start freaking her. I freak my own self out. I don't knock your slides. Let me tell you what. Flojo could not have beat me. Mm -hmm. In my Nike slides. I took off running. I was just trying to get a little walk in. I got some extra cardio. Because I took off running in Nike slides because I started thinking the gators were going to take off running to wow. catch me. I said, oh, Lord, girl. And then there was my destructive thinking. My children would find me at the gate or at the lake. And it would be like, you know, one leg missing. <laughs> oh, Fresh my God. Me. Yeah. Like, I think that way. It was terrible. Anyway, normal. Yeah, that's normal. Wow. A day in the life of Christy. You're welcome. Did you just a Kurt? Yeah. I hate that. I know. You say it every time. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to say, what are you doing? I just put on my mat work my sunglasses. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, anxiety, I guess, shows itself in different ways. And, it, you know, and it it shows up differently from, you know, and so. so Do no, you have anxiety? Um, I don't know if I have anxiety. Um, I'm probably sure I do, but I don't know. I don't know how it manifests itself because oftentimes I get, I don't know if it's weird. Um Part of my thing is I'm hyper, so I don't know. I'm naturally hyper, so I don't know if that has a form of anxiety. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't. I don't know enough about it to speak intelligently about it, from you know about it. Your therapist has never said you have anxiety. No, she no. I, no then you she, probably don't. <laughs> then you probably don't. No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't say that at all. I you know I I think I you know I don't I don't ha- like I don't go through that stuff. My stuff will come out in my music sometimes if my tempos are too fast, and that's because I'm hyper, you know, or something like that, or something like that. But I don't, I don't, th- I really don't think I have anxiety. Um, I try to remove myself from stuff before I do, you know, because I try to be in control of my thoughts and all that kind of good stuff, which is still hard sometimes, but I mean, it is what it is. So, well, you got rehearsal tonight, though. Yep, I guess to go. Well. Opera oh. Orlando, Rigoletto. <laughs> you said Rigoletto, and it makes me think of Figaro. <laughs> so. Figaro, Figaro, Figaro. Anyway. I think I'm going to start my vocal career. 
Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I think you should. Well, thank you all for listening in about the trip and a little piece about anxiety. Um, I hope this helps help you. Um, so how do you or say just make you laugh. Or made you laugh. So how do you say it? Go rate us at what and what and what? what how do you say it? I don't even know what you just said, but I will say this. Go check us out on our website, redandgreen.com. Go to Instagram at red and green colorblind. Check us out on Facebook. We actually, the podcast will post to Facebook. Oh, cool. And you can actually listen directly from Facebook. Fun okay. fact. If you have not, please rate, review, and subscribe on any platform that you listen to your podcast because we are on them all. Everything will get so much better after May 8th, after I graduate and I will have more time. I'm already working on content for later when I can actually implement it because I'm not spending every night till nine o'clock doing homework. That's right. So thank you so much. And we'll see you next week on Red and Green, Red and Green the podcast. podcast.